Welcome to the leftover edition of the Worst Fantasy Show. This is the worst! Mota di Tabanaka see welcome into the worst fantasy show. I am your host with the least, Jack Lusne. We are coming in the day after Canadian Thanksgiving. That is why the show is coming in a little bit late. Uh, also, I was going to do it live, but then we had some last minute technical difficulties. It was not going to record the show, which I kind of need, so I can pull the audio after. Uh, so actually now I'm doing a pre-record, uh, so apologies for like all the confusing mix-ups, but uh, yeah, the show should be up, uh, basically as soon as I'm done recording it, I'm going to post it, uh, so again, apologies for the mass confusion, uh, but holiday weekend, uh, you know, can be killer, basically every show that I had scheduled got rescheduled for various reasons, Ironically enough, though, when it's American Thanksgiving and, uh, you know, we're really in a crucial part of the fantasy season, I won't have anything going on. So I should be here for you guys. Um, I'm also going to be looking into some new streaming services soon enough. But, uh, you know, let's not uh, delay any further. Let's get into the hearts and farts, starting with a little bit of positivity. Baker Mayfield continues to be one of the best fantasy quarterbacks, uh, much to the surprise of everybody. I think uh, almost every fantasy analyst was expecting at least a little bit of regression for Baker Mayfield with the departure of Dave Canales, and it has not been that way at all. Uh, I picked him up off waivers in a single quarterback league, uh, an important league, and uh, I'm very happy even though I benched him myself and cost myself yet another matchup in that league uh, for Justin Fields, who was on this list, but a lot lower. Uh, so it kind of sucks. Baker Mayfield was the number one fantasy quarterback this week. And then you had Jordan Love, Caleb Williams, Brock Purdy, Jared Goff, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Drake May, Bo Nix, the two rookies getting it done. Aaron Rodgers, who big news today dropping, obviously, Devontae Adams has been traded to the New York Jets. So in some single quarterback leagues, if Aaron Rodgers is floating out there, I know he isn't one of mine. Maybe he's worth a pickup. Uh, and then you also had Jaden Daniels, uh, CJ Stroud, Lamar Jackson, Andy Dalton, Justin Fields, and Burrow with that long run, the tutty run from Joe Burrow. It was like 54 yards. Uh, had him in the hearts for the quarterbacks. For the running backs, oh my God, Sean Tucker. Uh, he's been like a deep sleeper on a lot of fantasy analysts' uh, lists for like a long time. Now, it's not something that I think is going to be prescriptive for the rest of the season. He did have a monster game, but it was on 38% of snaps. It really will be, you know, kind of we'll have to see if this turns into a three-headed backfield with Rashad White, Bucky Irving, and Sean Tucker. I think Bucky Irving, based on his size, athleticism, and skill set, I think they are using him as the lightning, and Rashad White or Sean Tucker are supposed to be the thunder. Sean Tucker's uh, thunder, a lot more thunderous these days than Rashad White, so we'll see how that breaks down going forward but otherwise some familiar names here joe mixon king henry b john robinson finally had the monster game uh we've been waiting for against the carolina panthers but so did tyler algier so it's not like their uh snaps or workload was really that much different it's just that the panthers defense was that bad so that's definitely a team that you want to keep an eye on in terms of playing your running backs against the panthers uh, Brees Hall finally showing up also 150 all-purpose yards. David Montgomery just continues to be steady Eddie for the Lions. 
uh, DeAndre Swift, Bucky Irving, Tyrone Tracy. I think this was a lot more impressive in the absence of Devin Singletary continues to dominate the snap share, had 84% of the snaps uh, and had another great game, uh, 100 all-purpose yards in a tutty. Damian Pierce showing up on this list was hilarious. Ray Davis subbing in for the late inactive James Cook. Uh, you also had J.K. Dobbins, Tony Pollard, and then serviceable games from Kenneth Walker, Alexander Madison, Alvin Kamara, Shuba Hubbard, and Chase Brown. Wide receivers, Chris Godwin, king of the slot position. Ever since he's been moved back into the slot, this guy is dominating. His floor games are 10 points. It's five for 50 or 60. He is the most consistent weapon for Baker Mayfield. And this was the monster game. Over 10 receptions, over 100 yards. And I think he had two touchdowns. Yeah, Debo Samuel showing up finally. Alan Lazard, uh, who is probably going to be a lot less relevant going forward. A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith to a lesser degree. Both coming back from the injury. Uh, had a touchdown, but A.J. Brown had the bigger game, six for uh, 119, I think, in a tutty. Uh, you had Garrett Wilson, who now people are going to be mighty nervous about because of Devontae, uh, but I think they will be able to coexist. Uh, Terry McLaurin, another two touchdowns for him. Jaden Daniels making use of his number one. Zay Flowers showing up on this list. Gabe Davis showing up on this list. Um, and then you had Keenan Allen, Romeo Dobbs, Pop Douglas, Josh Downs, Deontay Johnson, Christian Watson, Stephon Diggs, uh, Jamison Williams, Drake London, the aforementioned Devonta Smith, Tank Dell finally had a decent week, and Tyler Lockett just continuing to get things done. On the tight end side, I mean, it's it's hard to talk nice about tight ends, but hey, uh, I there was a league where I dropped Evan Ingram. I just couldn't deal with holding him anymore and uh, this whole deal with the hamstring. He, of course, has immediately come back and had a monster game. Uh, but I don't feel as bad because I dropped him and I said, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to play the guy that I have been riding. And that was Cole Komet, who was the number one tight end this week because he had a couple tutties. Uh, you had George Kittle, Sam Laporta, Mark Andrews finally caught a touchdown, which I predicted because everyone was calling for it last week. That's how it works. Everyone was saying, oh, last week is the, I was like, no, nah, now everybody's off of it. This is the touchdown week. That's how the fantasy gods, they're fickle. That's what they are. They're just fickle. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, besides Mandrews, there was McBride, Evan Ingram, Brock Bowers getting it done kind of with volume. Uh, they're really – McBride and Bowers, I think, are the two best fantasy tight ends in terms of consistency because they get the most targets and have the best volume. Evan Ingram, if he can – I thought that's what his role would be if it continues to – we'll see. But, yeah, um, you know, that 10 for 109, that's kind of – you know, what I was predicting all along for Evan Ingram. Uh, and then Hunter Henry caught a touchdown. He's going to be a hot pickup now that Drake May is the quarterback. Kyle Pitts, still can't make fun of Kyle Pitts yet, guys. He had a decent game, enough to be in the top 10. Uh, Noah Fant, Zach Ertz, and Kate Otten caught a touchdown if you had to stream him. For defense, the Detroit Lions being on this list. Now that's fucking painful because uh if you guys saw it uh and again uh you know uh what is it reader warning <laughs> uh except uh listener warning i guess in this case viewer warning uh i'm not going to show the clip or anything but i'm just going to say aiden hutchinson suffered a very unfortunate injury um it was <laughs> not unlike the anderson silva injury when he uh broke his shin on um Fuck, I forget Buddy's name, but it, when they were in, it was the rematch. Oh, Chris Weidman. That's what it was. So uh, Weidman knocked him out because he was dancing around and stuff, and then they had the rematch, and he thought, oh, Anderson's going to take this serious, and he's going to whoop his ass. And then, no, he ended up breaking his shin on, on the dude's leg. That was fucking gnarly. Aiden Hutchinson essentially doing the same thing, but on his own teammate's leg. This is another... Friendly fire incident taking a guy out for the remainder of the season. We had Mahomes and Rasheed Rice, and now we have Aiden Hutchinson 
and whatever um, defensive end or tackle it was on the other side. And granted, it was not that guy's fault at all. It was a complete freak accident. That guy didn't do anything. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Could have been anyone. Uh, but it's just the way that Hutchinson came whipping around, um, doing like almost a uh, like a helicopter motion. His legs swinging around in full. Yeah, it was it sucked. So it's really shitty. Um, obviously, put the damper on the Detroit Lions season and potential Super Bowl chances. Um, I, I don't think it affects anything for fantasy football. Um, unfortunately, it's just really shitty for the Lions. So I just bringing that up. Aiden Hutchinson, unfortunately, out for the year. So um, you know, shout out to him and his family, and hopefully, he has a speedy and healthy recovery and we are able to see him back full form next season. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the box. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, crazy news coming across the wire literally as I'm talking. Okay. We'll get to that in a second. Cause we're about to get into the farts. Uh, okay. So the, the defense, the Detroit Lions, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which I called. Uh, that was one of my favorite uh, streaming defenses on the Thursday and Sunday show. So if you guys were there with us, I, I said, hey, if it's uh, this Rattler Snake kid, who actually was quite impressive, honestly, uh, but was still a rookie facing a tough defense, a tough situation. The Bucks had a touchdown, even though it was a high-scoring game, their defense – uh, really got it done uh, for fantasy. They were number two. Uh, and then you have the Steelers, the Texans. That was my other one. Uh, I was two for three because the Eagles were on this list. Uh, they were disappointing. They still had nine fantasy points in the league that I played uh, that I was looking in. Uh, so it's not like they buried you, but they it was definitely not what you wanted. Um, I think if you went with my Bucks or Texans picks, obviously you were a lot happier. Uh, and then Packers and Bears also were good. Uh, so now, now that I'm seeing this news coming across the wire, it's actually a perfect segue into the farts. Come on, don't bullshit me. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. 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 You sell so bullshit. So breaking news, according to Tom Pelissero, the Steelers, my Pittsburgh Steelers, are planning to start Russell Wilson over Justin Fields in Sunday's game versus the New York Jets. I, I, what? Huh? What in the fuck? I genuinely don't know what the fuck they're thinking. Ricky, do they answer the fuck goofs? Where? Straight up, like I, I mean, this is just, <laughs> you just got to laugh because I, 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 any more sound drops I can play because I'm befuddled by this, by this news. Justin Fields has been playing just fine. Why the, f and, and he, uh, ah, we just finally put up like 30 points. I think it was the first time all season. He had two rushing touchdowns in the game. I the, I hope this is some kind of magic smoke screen. This is just bullshit. I'm okay. I can't even do the rest. No, I'm okay. We'll do the rest of the show. Um, speaking of quarterbacks, the ones that let you down: Geno Smith, Kirk Cousins, Kyler Murray, Justin Herbert, uh, Daniel Jones. If you played him, the Rattler Snake. I know some people are starting Spencer Rattler in deeper leagues and AOC. Uh, they were all under twenty, so they didn't kill you. Uh, but in a week where a lot of quarterbacks really boomed, they were the doom. And then, really, you want to talk about doom, fucking Deshaun Watson. Is, has there been a worse quarterback this season than Deshaun Watson? Not just for fantasy, but for real life. I don't think anyone's even playing him anymore. Uh, but Dak Prescott was also incredibly terrible. Uh, the Detroit, uh, The Dallas Cowboys got their asses whipped by the Detroit Lions. So that was... That was rough, but also segue into the running backs, Jameer Gibbs. This was the spot for him to have a real blow-up game, but unfortunately, uh, David Montgomery is definitely putting a, a damp, damper on the potential ceiling of Jameer Gibbs. Um, 
But uh, otherwise, I think the other surprising one to me was Josh Jacobs and James Conner, both kind of having myopic fantasy days. Uh, I especially days where the wide receivers were getting hurt and I was expecting more of a running and defense attack. It really just didn't work out that way for either running back. Uh, Jordan Mason got hurt. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. We'll talk about later. Austin Eckler. There was no Brian Robinson. It was a good matchup. Again, Gibbs, Jacobs, Mason, and Eckler, they didn't kill you, uh, but it was not great. And then under 10, like the guys that actually really hurt you, uh, Rico Dowdle, Saquon Barkley had his first real dud of a game uh, on the season, Antonio Gibson. The Jaguars' backfield continues to be a hot mess. Travis Etienne, Tank Bigsby, both were outdone by Dearness Johnson. Uh, if there's three guys, none of them are useful. Jalen Warren continues to be fetched, not a thing. Um, Trey Sermon, Javante Williams, and Jerome Ford, unfortunately, another hamstring injury. Uh, and he was already getting phased out weirdly for no reason. Um, but now injured, like obviously he is droppable in redraft formats. Uh, for the wide receivers, Rashid Shahid, uh, wasn't really serviceable unless your league counts special teams touchdowns. And then on top of it, got a knee injury. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but Jamar Chase, it wasn't bad, but again, for a Jamar Chase game, it was kind of, eh, and it was against the Giants. Um, again, kind of just, eh, games. You had Darius Slayton, Michael Wilson, Wandale, Nuke, and then guys that kind of hurt you bad, JSN, Pickens, Tolbert, McConkey, DK Metcalf, Amari Cooper, Christian Kirk, Darnell Mooney regressing to the norm, Roma Dunes, Brandon Ayuk, I think, is probably the worst one on this list. This guy has had one good game all year. He has supposedly been healthy all year and he was bitching about his money. He got his money. Bro, where are you? Uh, Mike Evans, the the curse of New Orleans just continues to haunt him. BTJ finally had a bad game. DJ Moore uh, also. This was just not his game. Uh, Quentin Johnston if in deep release, if you were still holding on to that. And also he picked up an injury. Khalil Shakir, incredibly consistent and impressive for a slot guy to begin the year. Completely phased out at this point, it seems like. Uh, and he could just pop back up of no accord at some point. Uh, Dontavian Wicks, I said I was staying in that flame and he got injured. Plus, was also seeing inconsistent targets again. And then you want to talk inconsistent targets. Or Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley just looks sad in Tennessee. And I don't blame him because... I watched, uh, you know, shout out to Andy Holloway of fans, the Fantasy Footballers. Um, he put out a, a tweet where it was showing all of Calvin Ridley's targets. And for you audio listeners out there, I'm doing air quotes because these targets, oh my fuck. Uh, like half of them were just completely uncatchable. And then the other half were essentially surrounded by three to four defenders. Like legitimately, like he had three guys around him and... Levis was trying to squeeze the ball and it didn't make any sense. Um, so it was it was brutal. Um, for tight end, you want to talk brutal? Dallas Goddard costing me my money. This motherfucker, I gave him his flowers. I said he was having the best season of his career. And he lets me down in a big spot like this. I'll never forgive you, Dallas Goddard. I'm kind of kidding, but not really. Um, in the Wildcat on... Uh, Underdog. I had Jaden Daniels, 20 points. Derek Henry, 25 points. Tony Pollard, 16 points. Chris Godwin, 30 points. Terry McLaurin, 20 points. And this fucking loser, Dallas Goddard. Kidding, not kidding. Uh, zero points. This motherfucker goosed me. Um, that. <laughs> excuse me. Oh, it's making me sick, quite literally. Um, no, that lineup uh, would have probably cost me uh or sorry would have won me at least a couple hundred bucks if not maybe like crack a thousand and dallas goddard just fucking tanked that shit for me so that sucked um but also dalton kincaid got uh vultured by dawson knox david and joku is still working his way back uh jawan johnson uh just three for 48 dalton schultz just four for 27 isaiah likely uh, just, again, very inconsistent when he shows up. 
Fergulicious, the Muth, Tucker Craft all disappeared this week. And if you tried to stream Tyler Conklin, it didn't work. Uh, for defense, if you still, this is why I do not advocate ever just uh, grabbing like a top five defense and just trying to ride them out. Um, the Dallas Cowboys got absolutely torched. If they were in your lineup, uh, may have cost you the week even. Uh, but also the Jets, the Colts, the Eagles, and the Chargers. Eagles and Chargers, again, in the league that I was in, nine and nine and a half. So that was not that bad, but it wasn't like winning your week or anything like that. And they were under, um, you know, they were in the below average category, but they weren't the ones that really banged you in a bad spot. Uh, but that's it for the hearts and farts. Let's get into some waivers and then let's get on out of here. The fuck? fuck is in the air, the fuck, there's white shit everywhere, the fuck, I must be fucking baked and this shit's probably fake, the fucking hell did I just take the fuck? For quarterbacks in single quarterback leagues, Andy Dalton, I'm going back to the well because they're going to have the matchup at Washington, so if he gets dropped and you need a streamer to pick up uh, in case of an injury and or a bye week or something or another, uh, I do like Andy Dalton, Drake May, and Bo Nix. I think just are both respectable backups that should be stashed. More so Drake May, I think, looks surprisingly good in his first start and potentially in some better matchups uh, could do some things. So I like Drake May. Uh, for Superflex, though, you're going to have to deep dive a little further in that dumpster. I actually don't mind AOC. Uh, Aiden O'Connell, even though he's lost Devontae Adams, uh, and even though the team around him maybe isn't as good, I think he's not terrible. I mean, the fact that he, you know, didn't look abysmal against a solid Pittsburgh Steelers defense, uh, I think is credit to him. So if I'm in a super flex league and I'm really in need of a quarterback, I'm at least picking him up just to kind of see uh, how he does for the rest of the season. But in terms of just a pure matchup spot start, uh, Ty Huntley was uh, probably dropped in a lot of leagues because of the bye week and because he hasn't been that great. But he's got a matchup on the road against the Indianapolis Colts who have been giving up a lot of fantasy points. Uh, so he might be viable again if you just need someone in place for a bye week and injury, etc. The running back position is going to be very spicy this week. I think how you delineate and identify the running backs this week is going to be incredibly important. Um, the big names are going to be Sean Tucker, obviously, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ray Davis for the Buffalo Bills. Kamani Vidal for the Los Angeles Chargers. I think those are the big three names that performed this week, had fantasy points. So they're going to be on everybody's radar. Um, I think Dearness Johnson is another name that's going to pop up because, again, he was the highest performing, even though he didn't really do a lot. Of the Jaguars trio, he was the one that performed the best. Um, I also think because Ramondre Stevenson was out, Jamichael Hasty for the Patriots, a little bit more of a deeper play. But how am I prioritizing this? So I think, first of all, Sean Tucker, uh, as well as he played, really scares me because it's like really the first great game that he's had. And it was on a 36% snap share. And if Rashad white is still even moderately healthy, this feels like uh, it will turn into a slightly better version of the Jaguars three headed backfield. I don't mind a committee backfield where there are two guys with clear delineated roles. So if you eliminate Rashad White, for example, from the Tampa Bay back, uh, backfield, I love Sean Tucker and Bucky Irving. I would be willing to flex either of them or play either of them as my RB2 because they both, in my mind, have a clear role. I kind of feel the same way even about Travis Etienne and Tank Bigsby. But if you start mixing in a Dearness Johnson and he is taking away meaningful snaps from both, if you start mixing in, again, a Rashad White and he is taking in, taking away meaningful snaps from both, now you're really capping my ceiling and chapping my ass as, in terms of fantasy football. So I actually think I would prioritize Ray Davis. He seemed to get a huge snap share 
uh, with uh, James Cook out. And I think that is the most likely to repeat itself. And even if James Cook were to come back, he might retain a role because he has started to emerge. I think I would prioritize Ray Davis ahead of Sean Tucker and Kamani Vidal. But then I'm looking at guys that I can get and I think might be a little less under the radar. So the first one, Isaac Grendo, kind of a guy that I've picked up here and there, but unfortunately wasn't able to keep because my rosters weren't deep enough. But he is a backup running back for the San Francisco 49ers. If anything happens to Jordan Mason, if Jordan Mason is even limited, uh, Garendo came in and had 99 rush yards. Um, again, he's the guy that uh, at the draft combine had the – he ran like a 4 3 40 or something crazy. Like he's a solid physical specimen. He landed on a team where he can really take advantage of – maybe a lack of refined skills and just be a physical specimen. Um, so he is definitely someone I'm prioritizing that I think I can get a little cheaper than those big names going ahead of him. The other one is Jalen Wright. I think Jalen Wright, uh, because of the bye week and the perception that uh, A. Shane and Mostert could conceivably be back. Um, but hey, if they're not, Jalen Wright saw work. And this is a solid matchup against the Colts coming up. If you need a spot start, I think Jalen Wright is, again, a sneaky one that makes sure he wasn't dropped. Um, and if he was, definitely worth a pickup. Um, Pierre Strong, another name. That's This is now we're getting into deeper leagues. This is your 14 to 16 team leagues. Pierre Strong, uh, again, seemed like he got most of the work ahead of even Deontay Foreman. The Foreman could actually see an uptick if they game plan for it. But now with Jerome Ford dealing with a hamstring injury, either Deontay Foreman or Pierre Strong, I think are both worth deep waiver ads. And again, 14, 16 teams for the Cleveland Browns. And if you are a winning team, you are 6-0, you are 5-1, and and you got some extra bench room, if you see Blake Corum or specifically Trey Benson get dropped, stash those guys. When I say Benson, it's because I looked at the Week 16, uh, basically, championship matchups. So if you're 6-0, and 5-1, and one, you should be starting to plan a little bit for your playoffs and, and, in theory, a potential championship run. They get the Panthers uh, in Week 16. So that is an incredible matchup that you would want to take advantage of. Um, so that is definitely, again, just if you have the room, I would be stashing those high upside uh, handcuffs like a Blake Corum or Trey Benson that to me immediately step into a starting role. God forbid anything happens to James Conner or Kyron Williams, especially Kyron Williams because I'm depending on him in the dynasty league. Uh, for wide receiver, so just check uh, certain guys who have been injured or maybe not performing up to a certain level. You may need to uh, pick them up. Uh, you know, a guy like a Christian Watson, for example, I saw was dropped in one of my leagues and I have a waiver claim in. Uh, another one is a DeAndre Hopkins was actually dropped in multiple of my leagues. He could be potentially worth a pickup. Again, if you're looking at some of these really deep options, I would rather just take the shot on a Watson or a, or a nuke. Uh, especially, I think Hopkins, they're going to need him in the coming matchup against the Bills. Uh, but some of the deeper names uh, for wide receiver, Pop Douglas for the New England Patriots with Drake May in place. And uh, you could also argue um, if he was not picked up, uh, the rookie that suddenly, uh, Jalen Polk uh, also. Um, one of my guys, Bob Means. And shout out to, uh, uh, I don't have the name right now, uh, but this guy on Twitter was asking me some dynasty questions like early, early uh, present hot beans is uh, penguin space, uh, <laughs> random Twitter name, but he was asking me about um, some like deep stash dynasty plays. And uh, one of my favorites in like 14 plus team leagues was Bub Means, and I have him in like six different dynasty leagues stashed on my taxi squad. He, I was like, hey, he's just He's a guy you draft in the fourth round or later of your rookie draft, or you just pick him up off waivers. Um, he was very much um, – I had even done a 
a short video about dynasty free agency pickup guys of guys you just throw on your taxi squad. And if you hit on just one of these guys and they conceivably are able to turn into like an NFL starter, like you've accrued value in dynasty. And Bub Means was at the top of that list uh, of guys I wanted to stash on my taxi. So I have them in six different leagues in dynasty. Uh, so to see him pop up, uh, in a redraft game like this, I thought was very interesting. And if Olave is missing time, if Rashid Shahid is missing time, Bub Means might be worth like a really just, again, if you're in a 16-team league and you just have to cover a spot with a dart throw for a bye week or an injury, uh, and you just have nobody else, throw Bub Means in there. Uh in the same breath of just kind of throw them in there, hope and pray. Rashad Bateman um, has been serviceable, uh, gross to say. And then uh, for the Rams, uh, wide receivers, Tutu Atwell is still the one I prefer. And Demarcus Robinson, I think Cup is possibly returning. Uh, speculation, he may return week seven. If that were to happen, I actually like those guys even more. So Tutu Atwell specifically, especially if he was dropped anywhere, uh, and Demarcus Robinson might be available too in deeper leagues. For tight end, Hunter Hurst Henry. Come on down, Triple H. Uh, you are now relevant again, thanks to Drake May. Um, but yeah, he caught a sweet looking touchdown. Uh, I think with the kid Drake May and Hunter Henry now has uh, value again as a, as a tight end two streaming option. Uh, so I do like Hunter Henry as an ad. And then getting deeper with it, Zach Ertz, Jatavian Sanders had his best game of the season. Finally is getting a little bit of volume. Uh, and Jawan Johnson. Again, if all the Saints wide receivers are hurt and Taysom Hill is still out, uh, he only had three for 48. But again, you could see a little bit of an uptick if they're just lacking in uh, any kind of receiving options there. So he's kind of a deeper stash too. Um, and then my favorite defenses, it seems like coming up. So the obvious ones. Saints versus Denver Broncos. That's the Thursday matchup. It's a home matchup. Conceivably should be a good matchup, but Broncos kind of come and go. The Jaguars, I really like this one. It's a London game. I think this might be my favorite play because the Jaguars defense has been kind of bad. But, again, this is a London game. Drake May, as good as he looked, he was he's a rookie. He's there. And the Jags are, I keep saying the London game because the Jags are already there. They just played in London. So conceivably, I have said that word twice now, uh, theoretically, hypothetically, the Jaguars should have stayed in London. And the Patriots are the ones that are going to have to travel there. So I feel like the Jags should get a little bit of a home field advantage. I mean, they already have kind of the affection and nomenclature of being the official London team. But you add in the fact, like I said, they've been there for two weeks. I think that does make a huge impact. So I think potentially the defense, when you look at a rookie Drake May, the lack of receiving options and Ramondre Stevenson potentially still being out and therefore a lack of a running game, uh, just nowhere to turn. I do think there's going to be some turnovers. Uh, I do like the Jaguars defense a lot this week. So there's someone I'm going to be picking up in some leagues. I also like the... Commanders against the Panthers, uh, Commanders defense. That's more of a mid play, but I so I think the way I'm prioritizing is the Jags, the Saints, the Commanders, but even above the Commanders, actually, I'm going to sneak one more in for you: the Indianapolis Colts against the Miami Dolphins. It's tricky. It's tricky because you never know when the Dolphins might just pop off, but it just seems like with the quarterback play that they've been getting, they are incapable of scoring more than 21 points in a game. So I, I just don't see them having a monster game, but it is still a little bit scarier, I think, because the running game, they're not great against the run. And obviously the Dolphins could just run the air out of the ball. So I do think I would take the commanders above them. But for me, really, I'm looking at the Jags and the Saints potentially here. 
All right, that's it for me. Uh, thank you guys so much for jumping in late with me on this edition of Hearts and Farts. We will be back to normal schedule. I'm hoping uh, it would be Thursday at 7. We'll figure out what we're doing. Um, I might have to do a, another pre-record and drop it at 7, or if I can, I'll figure out how to go live uh, on a, maybe a different streaming thing altogether if I have the time. But otherwise... Uh, you know, just keep in touch. If you follow me on Twitter at Jack Lucene, or, uh, if you are more of a Facebook person, go follow the worst fantasy or sorry, it's the worst sports channel on Facebook. Cause it covers the entire channel. Uh, but you can follow the page and usually I will drop news on what's happening with the shows. If I remember later rescheduling or blah, 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 you'll see it on Twitter. You'll see it on Facebook. So you can follow me there. Uh, but otherwise, uh, make sure you super kick that subscribe and like really helps with the show and stuff. But I will catch you all on the flip side. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms, bare chested. Somebody stop Look that out, man. Here comes